Well, good morning. Glad to see everyone that was able to, uh, to make it out today to worship those of us uh, in-house, those in the parking lot, and those of you watching online. What a, what a blessing it is, and just a, a beautiful day. I'd like to begin uh, by wishing everyone a, a happy Mother's Day uh, today. Uh, I am one of those people that I, I realized in, in adulthood that I was very, very fortunate that um, uh, I had two wonderful grandmothers that I knew. Uh, not everyone gets to know their, their grandparents, uh, and I had a wonderful mother uh, throughout uh, my life. Also, uh, was able to meet someone uh, with Becky, who is a wonderful mother with, uh, with our three children, and we are going today actually over to see my mother-in-law, uh, whom, you know, with all the mother-in-law jokes that seem to be out there, she and I actually do get along really well uh, with one another, and she's 99 years old. Uh, and, and, you know, that's just a real blessing, and, and we need to count that. But, you know, one of the things that I, I mention each year on Mother's Day is uh, I want uh, especially every woman to recognize uh, how important uh, their witness is to other people. There have been women in my uh, life, women in, in the churches that, that I have served that have taught me so much, and many of them had no children themselves. And so a lot of times people feel like, oh, geez, you know, this is for, for women who have just had children. And I'll tell you what, they have had some tremendous impacts, not only on my life, but on the lives of so many. And so on this day where I can look to say, you know, it's a very, very joyous time for me, for many people it's a very difficult time. Maybe they just lost a mother, or uh, maybe they're a mother that just lost a child. There's, there's all sorts of scenarios. So I really want us to be sensitive to people. Uh, I feel very fortunate, but I recognize that some people are going through a difficult time on days like today. So let's be sensitive to each other. Let's, let's, let's be there for each other. So uh, I am going to enjoy this day as best I can and in share in that, and, and hopefully all of us can, because that really is a, a key, key thing. I'd like to continue on uh, in our time of worship by going over some of the ministry opportunities that we have. Uh, our monthly mission this year is going to be teen, or this month, is going to be teen challenge uh, that we have. You can see if you're in here the display of uh, different uh, items that they're in need of. Obviously, uh, if, if you do don't want to go to get those, you can uh, have a financial donation and we can get those over to them as well, and that's great. Also with our mission trip, uh, we're supporting that, and, and next week uh, we're going to be having a breakfast, and that's going to be a fundraiser for our mission trip that's coming up in June. So next Sunday from 8.30 to 9.45, uh, we're going to be having a, a breakfast uh, for anyone who would like to come, uh, and that's going to be a donation only uh, with that. Now, also, this coming Saturday, uh, we have partnered with uh, the Trinity United Methodist Church with their Good Shepherd Kitchen uh, bag lunch giveaway. Uh, Sandy Beckwith is uh, in charge of that from here, uh, and that's going to be next Saturday from 11 to 1 at the Trinity United Methodist Church. So anyone who would like to be a part of that, um, you could contact uh, Sandy for that. And I'm sorry, that's from 11.30 to 1. Uh, and then actually next week, or on the 21st, the, the following week, uh, is a kids club drive through hot dog fundraiser. And that's going to be from 11 to 1. And that'll just be through the front doors. You just drive in. And uh, the, those are great things. Uh, also wanted to remind people today is our second Sunday. And so after worship uh, today, the kids uh, and the parents will have an opportunity to stay, and uh, those are just wonderful things. Uh, and then I'd also like to put a plea out, uh, the preschool that we've had here, uh, that we, we sponsored through the church uh, since the 80s, is really in need of both teachers and aides. So uh, we are in need of them for both uh, the summer term, and we are in need in um, in the fall. So if anyone here would be interested, or if you know of people that would be interested, uh, please uh, have them give us a call. Uh, we'd really like to uh, uh, to keep moving forward and to keep doing that. So, uh, uh, so let's all work together as, as we move forward with that. Okay, at, at, uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, uh, invite any of the kids that we have in our congregation to join me down 
for our steps for our children's sermon. How's everybody doing? Good. Doing good. I am doing fantastic. Well, I just was checking. I have a question. I'm going to give an example and see if you guys know. If you're in your home and you're in one room and your mom and your dad are in the other room and one of them calls for you, can you tell the difference whether it's your mom or your dad by their voice? You can tell the difference? You can tell the difference, right? Can you all tell the difference? If you're, how can you tell the difference? They're in another, you can't see them. They're in another room. You, you know their voice, huh? You've probably, they've probably talked to you before, huh? Yeah, yeah, many times. Yeah, yeah. So you know their voice, don't you? Yeah, because, so even if you don't see them, you know who they are, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, in the Bible today, I'm going to be reading a story where Jesus says that we're supposed to know his voice. Now, people wonder sometimes, but we can't see Jesus, right? But we just found out that even if we don't see somebody, we can know who they are if we know them, huh? And so that's what Jesus is telling us here, too, that he says if we know him, and what that means is we pray to him and we learn, and if we listen you know how we're going to know? If it's about doing the right thing and caring for other people, that's always the voice of Jesus. Huh. That's always going to be the voice of Jesus. Just like we'll know our parents' voice, we're going to know Jesus' voice too. Think you remember that? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Let's bow our heads and we'll say a little prayer. Dear God, we thank you so very, very much for always watching over us. And just like we recognize our parents' voice, Lord, help us to always recognize your voice also in all that we do. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, great. Thanks. Bye. Bye. As the kids are, are heading back, uh, I'd like us to move into our time of both praise and, and prayer. And I'd like to begin with, uh, with a praise that uh, uh, Candy Morgan uh, gave me uh, just this morning. This is a real blessing. Her niece, uh, Katie, and her husband, Larry, uh, they gave birth to a new baby boy um, a- after a, a tremendous amount of worry and prayer. He arrived on May 7th. Four pounds, three ounces. He was due early July. Um, So this was an exceptionally early delivery. Four pounds, three ounces, but both mother and child are doing fine right now. And that really is a blessing. That really is a blessing. So uh, we will will continue uh, to keep Katie uh, and her son in prayer uh, as they uh, recuperate and grow in both stature and love. And that is, that's a real blessing. Uh, I'd also uh, like to keep in, in both uh, prayer and this praise generically, uh, those suffering with COVID. I've, I've heard of a number of more people who have had that, but uh, the symptoms seem to be much less severe for most people except for those that are uh, immune compromised. So uh, I think this is a real blessing, but let's continue to keep people in prayer. Uh, especially those that might be most vulnerable, so that they too would stay safe. We also had a, um, uh, a tragedy uh, affect our, our preschool this past week, and I'd like to lift up the family of uh, Dorothy Downey. Dorothy had been uh, 
uh, kind of the after-school teacher and that here, was just diagnosed about two weeks ago with stage four cancer. Complications arose very quickly. She, as of two weeks ago, she was still teaching here uh, and just passed away very suddenly. Uh, and so uh, that's, that's, that's very, very difficult. Uh, Beth, her daughter, also is a teacher here. So uh, if we can keep uh, the entire Downey family uh, within our prayers, I know that would be appreciative. Uh, and also the, um, uh, the other teachers uh, and, and the students down there. That's, that's a very difficult time uh, for everyone involved. So if we can keep all of them in prayers, I know that would be appreciative. Um, also, uh, and again, just that whole concept right now of peace, uh, we hear so much still going on in Ukraine, but there are uh, turmoils that are going on uh, literally all over the world. So if we can uh, keep all of those situations in our prayers, uh, truly uh, that the love of Christ might enter people's hearts uh, and that we might be able to work toward, toward a time of peace. That's, uh, it's, just, it, it's just very, very critical. So with these praises and these prayer concerns, I'd like to take a few moments to... Uh, have some silent meditation so that we can lift our own prayers up to God. Uh, and then uh, I will lead us in a pastoral prayer and the Lord's Prayer. Can we bow our heads? Gracious Lord, sometimes it's simply nice to take a moment and to be silent, to allow your presence to envelop us. And no matter where we are, Lord, whether those of us in our sanctuary, those in the car, or those that are watching online, wherever, allow us to just take a moment and feel your presence. To know that your arms are wrapped around us. And no matter what turmoil our lives might be in, no matter what decisions we might be making, allow us to feel your calm, your comfort, your peace. Lord, we do pray for the Downey family and, and in them experiencing their loss. And we pray for all people, Lord, who have experienced loss, especially on, on this day. Lord, be with all of us. And Lord, for those of us that are, are going through just a just a wonderful period. Help us to be f there for those who are, are going through a difficult time. Because Lord, we need to be there for each other. We need to be supportive of one another. We need to recognize that we are all in this together as your children. And now, Heavenly Father, allow us to say the prayer together that your Son, our Savior Christ Jesus, taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I invite those who are in the sanctuary with us to stand if you are able for our opening hymn, uh, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. 
I am asking for a little grace and mercy with my voice today. I do not have COVID. I took a test and everything. We're all good. Uh, I was the musical director for a children's musical this past weekend, so I did a lot of one, two, three, you know, that thing. Kids and quarter notes don't mix, guys, let me tell you. Um, but I was actually going to say something, uh, uh, listening into the prayer concerns about uh, that family who had the, the baby early. Uh, my son was a little bit early, uh, and we had a NICU stay and everything. It was uh, not a super great time uh, in our lives. Really, really scary. Um, a time that's supposed to be really joyful, you know. Um, but I think maybe the, the root of that problem is that things didn't go according to plan. Baby was supposed to be here at this time, and they're, they're not. They're at this other time. And when things don't go according to plan, me at least, and I think a lot of us really, that's when we need to lean. We need to lean into our faith. And I know that my wife and I did during that time. Uh, and it was the only thing that got us through uh, that whole thing. So uh, if you're going through a time right now where things aren't going to, according to plan, you know, there really is no plan. Uh, and God's got us. That's, that's kind of the point. So let this song remind you of that. Is so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise and to know the saith the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood, and in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing, cleansing flood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I've proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust the precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved you more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Amen. Amen. And Jesus was in the temple courts, walking in Solomon's colonnade. Now the Jews who were there gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you. 
but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Is Jesus really the Messiah? That was the question that was being posed actually to Jesus by both the religious leaders and the ordinary Jews alike. Was he the Messiah? I believe that's a question many people are are still asking today, certainly by those who have little to no experience to Christianity, they're, they're questioning and wondering that. But even those of us in the church sometimes ponder these questions on how to be able to answer them properly to others because it is an important question for us to be able to answer. So how did Jesus respond? How did he respond when they asked him? if he was the Messiah. Well, he said, first of all, I did tell you, but you did not believe. Now, let's, let's pause here for a moment. Had Jesus ever actually said the words, I am the Messiah? Well, actually, yeah, in, in, in a roundabout way, he did. If we look back biblically, even in the book of John, when speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well, and as their conversation kept going in John 4, our passage was in John 10, so it's about six chapters prior, the woman said to Jesus, when the Messiah comes, he will explain everything to us. And Jesus responded to the Samaritan woman by saying, I, the one speaking to you, I am he. So, yes, he did claim to be the Messiah. He says it right there. So then getting back to our original text, Jesus continues to answer the question by saying, not only did I tell you, the works I do in my Father's name testify about me. But you don't believe because you're not my sheep. Now let's pause there. Jesus isn't being harsh or judgmental by saying they're not his sheep. Okay, we, we have to make sure we understand that. He is simply stating truth with the hope that people would change. He's like saying, okay, this really isn't the right way, so, you know, if, if you were to do this, but he has to call us out on accountability. He's not trying to be harsh. He's trying to get us to move into the proper direction. Now, how do we know that he's, he's trying to do this? Well, really, by his next statement, because he continues on by saying, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Now, Let's kind of take a step back to look at everything that just transpired here. First, Jesus is asked if he's the Messiah, right? And he responds by saying, one, I've already told you that, yes, I am the Messiah. Two, all the teachings and all the miracles that I have done in my Father's name testify about me being the Messiah, but you still don't believe, and the reason for that is because you're not my sheep. And then thirdly, he he basically is saying, if you desire to be one of my sheep, then you simply need to listen to my voice. And I'll know if you're doing this because I'll know you and you will start to follow me. And then Jesus closes The passage by saying, and my sheep never perish, and no one can snatch them out of my hand. Wow. I don't know if the people then grasped the significance 
of Jesus' words here, but they are extremely important not only for them, but for all of us to understand in every generation and to follow. The question of whether or not we believe that Jesus is the Messiah isn't as simple as responding yes or no. The question actually begs another question. It's almost assuming those of us here will say, yes, he is the Messiah. But when we say that, the next question comes, well, by saying this, are we willing to listen to Jesus' voice and follow him? And we say, well, what's the alternative? Well, (laughs) the alternative isn't to go evil. It's simply to listen to our voice and follow us. You see, it's a simple question, but it's a huge distinction and a huge commitment. Because, you see, if we believe Jesus is the Messiah, then he is our Lord. We need to understand what that word Lord means. If he is Lord, that means we are his servants. He calls the shots, not us. That's tough. And to use Jesus' example, he is the shepherd, we are the sheep. And if the sheep don't listen to the shepherd, not only will they probably run amok, but they are potentially in danger at any given moment. That's what he's saying here. You need to hear my voice. Listen and follow. Now, how does Jesus basically tell us to do this? We need to, first of all, know his voice. Listen to it and follow. Problem is, God's ways are so oftentimes different than our ways. I mean, (laughs) that's true for me, it's true for you, it's true for all of us, right? I mean, we kind of know that. Let me share an example here that, that I think we can all relate to because we recognize. We know that God is love. Right? Scripture says that. He's not about love. God is love. And everything God does centers around love because he is love. All of his actions, all of his deeds, everything that he would speak deals with love. Now, let's ask ourselves this rhetorical question. This past week, did everything we do or say come from love? Me neither. I don't have to hear one voice. <laughs> Because it wasn't true for any of us, right? I mean, it's not that we intentionally didn't do it, but we just simply didn't. We didn't. Why? Well, I can't speak for anybody else but me, but I I think we're probably all in this. Even though I know Jesus' voice, I sometimes listen to my voice instead of his. Oh, I'm not deliberately trying to choose evil. I'm just saying, yeah, that might be okay, God, but, right? See, when I follow Ken's way instead of God's way, I'm a rogue sheep. doesn't make me evil. That just means I'm just going off on my own. Possibly running amok. Always in potential danger. I'm guessing a lot of us can relate with that at times. That doesn't mean we're always going to find that danger, but we could. Now, I'm not a horrible individual. Neither are any of you. Well, maybe Mark, okay? But no, no, I'm just kidding, right? You know, none of us are horrible people. But you see, when we begin placing our opinions as gospel, we are making ourselves the shepherd. We are actually making ourselves the Messiah and not Jesus. And I've been guilty of it, and I think most, if not all of us, probably. I think as a whole country, that's where we're kind of at right now. Our opinions seem to be gospel. We just had a primary election last week. You know what that means? Now it gets really ugly. Wow. Wow. I mean, the jabs, the, the, the hate, the, oh, it's going to be back and forth and back and forth. It's good versus evil, and of course, the person we like is the good. But you see, where's God's love in any of this? 
Where's God's love? It, it, it's nowhere, really. You see, as a nation, we tend to know the voice of the news media that we listen to, but are we listening and following the voice of the shepherd? See what I'm saying? We're not, we're not necessarily evil. We're not evil at all. But are we listening to hear or are we actually listening to the voice of the shepherd? I, I have to ask myself. I think we all have to be challenged with that. And with, with social media and 24-hour news and everyone claiming to speak for God, oh my gosh, I didn't know we had so many theologians in this country and in this world. How do we hear Jesus' voice through all that noise? Well, the answer is, is really this. If what we are listening to is based on love and forgiveness for all people, because you see, that's the new covenant. When Jesus said he died for all, it's love and forgiveness for all people. That's what grace is, love and forgiveness. So if the voice we are hearing is based on love and forgiveness for all people, that's the voice of the shepherd. If what we are hearing is not love and forgiveness for all people, it's not the shepherd and we need to run because that's a wolf. That's a wolf. Oh, it might be wrapped up in sheep's clothing, but if it's not love and forgiveness for all, it's a wolf. And there's a lot of wolves out there right now. A lot of wolves. Now you see, the vast majority of people would never do anything evil. I honestly believe that, personally and theologically. However, I also have been around long enough to know that the vast majority are also willing to compromise on love and forgiveness for all people to get what we desire. I mean, in a sense, that's what the crucifixion of Jesus boiled down to. It's what they wanted, not what God wanted. But you see, compromising on love and forgiveness for all is never a Christian option. Never a Christian option. Oh, it's an option, <laughs> but never a Christian one if Jesus is really the Messiah. So the challenge that Jesus gives me, gives all of us here, gives listeners, is when we are listening with our ears, focus on what's being said on whether it is based on love and forgiveness for all. Not just with politics, in everything. When we go to work, at home, everywhere we go. Is it based on love and forgiveness for all? And if that's the case, we're listening to the shepherd. That's the voice we want to follow. May we bow in prayer. Gracious Lord, and, and I don't say that phrase lightly, you truly are gracious and you truly are Lord. I try to be a faithful servant. I sometimes mess up. So I know that you are Lord I know that I try to listen. I even recognize your voice. Sometimes I, I confess that I ignore it. Lord, all of us do. But instead of judging each other, help us to be supportive of each other. Help us to encourage each other. Help us to recognize that we are all trying to do our best. We are all trying to listen to your voice So help us to be there for one another, Lord. So that we can all listen. And we will all begin to recognize when it's not just for us that's beneficial, but that there will be love and forgiveness for all. Because that is your desire for the entire world. We pray this now in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. I invite those in the sanctuary who are able to stand for our closing hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. sins and griefs to bear what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer oh what peace we often forfeit oh a needless pain we bear all because we do not care We trials and temptations. Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrows? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laden, cumbered with a load of care? We should never. Despise, forsake thee, take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee, thou wilt find a solace there. I mentioned at the opening about things not going according to plan. Uh, Ken doesn't give me like an entire like typed out sermon. It's just like, you know, a paragraph roughly about what he's going to talk about. And so I'll choose hymns based on that. He blew the roof off with this sermon today. So I was like, oh, did not think that's what we were going to talk about. So uh, that hymn maybe didn't quite fit. Uh, but uh, one thing I wanted to riff on that, that he was talking about, I think that, that for me really, really hit me. Uh, when I've hurt people in my life and been hurt by people in my life, most of the time, um, as I've been reflecting on it, it's actually not been intentional. It's just been carelessness that has done it. A lot of the people that have hurt me the most, they just weren't really thinking. It wasn't like they deliberately tried to hurt me. It just happened because they were not paying attention on a large scale or on a small scale. And I think that um, the first step of hearing that love and forgiveness and hearing, um, hearing the voice of Jesus is just being intentional about everything we do throughout the week. When we listen, really listen uh, and really guard your words that you're saying to people, you know, and how you're presenting uh, your your views to people and things like that. Um, so I, my prayer for us this week is that we're all just very intentional in all of our relationships, that we go deeper uh, the way that Jesus was always going deeper with his disciples. Um, may you go in his peace. Amen.